Hey everyone, it's Jack here, Talk Nary City. I hope you're all doing very well indeed. Back today for my match preview. And before we get into the nitty gritty parts of this video, I really want to thank One Football for sponsoring both match preview and match reaction content on the channel this season. Of course, you know all about One Football. They sponsored the um, the watch alongs last season. They came to me and they said, Jack, we love Norwich City. We love the TNC community. How do we get involved this season? And we said, well, we love One Football. This is like Pookie and Buendia at their prime, a match made in heaven. If you want to download One Football, it is the best go to footballing app and it's completely free. The links in the description and I've found some stats from one football ahead of tomorrow's game and they don't make for pretty reading Manchester City have won their last three home Premier League games against Norwich City by an aggregate score of 14-1 winning 5-0 in the most recent league meeting at the Etihad in July 2020 of course we beat Manchester City the last time we were in the Premier League it was however at Carra Road uh, and in all competitions, Norwich City have won just two of their last 31 visits to Manchester City, winning 2-1 in September 1997. I wasn't even born then. And 3-2, of course, with that brilliant Johnny Housen goal in May 2013. Look, we're going up against a team whose squad is worth just shy of £1 billion. Pounds. Um, and they've just signed Jack Grealish for £100 million. Pounds. The money... Uh, on the table here is quite frankly ridiculous but that is the Premier League now um, and we've got a really challenging task. I'd be happy if we put in a performance similar to that um, that we did against Liverpool. I thought Liverpool were ruthless, I thought we were a bit unlucky in stages in that game um, and I think if we put up that kind of display you can't really be moaning too much. We know how difficult the opening four games are in the Premier League, Liverpool, Manchester City, Leicester, Arsenal, uh, and then Watford's a huge game coming up. You come through this with hopefully not too many goals conceded, possibly a point or two on the board against Leicester and Arsenal, and then we can start to kick on. It's crucial though that one, our fitness levels get up to scratch because I thought we looked really um, fatigued 60 minutes onwards against Liverpool. And that the new signings, the likes of Zolis and Sargent and Rashica, um, are all bedded in. Now, a few bits of news going into the game against Manchester City. Um, a few injuries, nothing too major. Onel Hernandez, Puemazuel Boheta and Christoph Zimmerman will all miss out. None of them would have started anyway. Um, and some really interesting transfer news, actually, coming out of the press conference. Farker has confirmed that a fullback, a centre-back and a holding midfielder are still required by Norwich City. So whether we get them players or not is another matter. But the fact that fans and board are on a similar wavelength here is really, really crucial. Uh, and clearly, Daniel Farker wants players there. He said he wants two players in each position and two players that will be good enough to start in the Premier League. And once we've got them three positions, he deems this squad good to go. Going into Manchester City then, in terms of the team, I think there's going to be a few changes that I want. And also, I think that Daniel Farker will want to see as well. I think the big talking point is around who starts up front, whether it's Josh Sargent or whether it's uh, Temu Pukki. I, th I do think that Daniel Fark will go with Timu Puki. I'd be wanting to see Josh Sargent. Granted, it's an incredibly difficult game to throw him in the deep end with, but I think it's important. This is almost our pre-season, um, you know, with the COVID issues we had in pre-season and the fact that a lot of these players um, we signed quite late on, so they didn't have the chance to play Um in preseason, I'd like to see Josh Sargent given a run out. I don't think Timmy Pukki's fit yet. I know Daniel Farker said that he's lost muscle mass due to the, his, um, you know, battles with COVID through the summer. I'd like to see Josh Sargent. I think he's cut out for the Premier League. Um, so we'll see what happens there. I think the midfield needs a little tweak. I'd be bringing Lucas Roop out and bringing Kenny McLean in. Really interesting to see Daniel Farker bigging up Kenny McLean in the press conference, said that him um, and Andrew uh, Omadama Belli had incredible weeks in training. Now, of course, we know that Kenny McLean had a fairly serious injury um, 
that came in the last game of the championship season. So again, a player that might not necessarily be fit, but he was one of our best performers in the championship last season. So I'd like to see Kenny McLean given a run. Um, and I really want to see Christos Solis. Now, this is a slightly more awkward one because it means that dropping either Rashica or Todd Cantwell, both of them players clearly with uh, an abundance of talent. But I'd like to see what Zolis has to offer from the start. Um, but also, I think Todd Cantwell and, and Rashica are, um, are players that we need against Manchester City. So how we d deal with that, I'm not too sure. I suspect that, that Fark will probably start Zolis from the bench um, and then kick on from there. Um, and then hopefully going forwards, when we're not up against Manchester City or Liverpool... We can drop out a midfielder and play three in behind the striker like we were doing in the championship last season, that 4-2-3-1. I really like that formation. I know that's Daniel Farker's go-to. So hopefully we can then um, field that really strong attacking three of Cantwell, Zollis and Rashica that I'm getting incredibly um, excited about. So I don't think there's going to be too many changes. I suspect the defence will stay the same with Aarons, Gibson, Hanley and Yanulis. I thought... That was fairly solid on the whole. Maybe not playing the, the uh, fullback to high up the pitch because that caused us issues. It's an incredibly demanding role that uh, Dimitri Anoulis and Max Aarons has. Um, and then hopefully we've learned some lessons from Liverpool and we can just keep the scoreline down. Look, Manchester City should be winning this game and I think they should be winning it relatively comfortably. With that being said, we've beaten Manchester City before um, and Manchester City struggled in their opening game against Spurs. Granted, Spurs played incredibly well, but they looked slightly blunt going forwards. I don't think they're quite happy with their um, with their strikers at the moment. I think they probably need a Harry Kane in there and they're clearly trying desperately to, to sign him. But with that being said, when you've got an abundance of talent that Manchester City have... Um, they should be winning. There we go. Let me know your thoughts on the game. Would you like to see any changes going into it? If so, who? And give me a score prediction as well. As well as that, one football. A big thank you to them for sponsoring these videos throughout this season. The link to download the app is in the description down below. And with that being said, a massive thank you to all of our sponsors who continue to support us and provide um, us with the resource to create these bits of content for free. Thanks very much for watching Manchester City at the Hetty Had this Saturday. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Been Jack Reeve. See you later, everyone. Bye bye.